Okay, great. Good afternoon, everyone. I need to hear a shout out from you all. Good afternoon. Can I hear a shout out? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Great. Thank you. I am good afternoon. So awesome. Wonderful. Good to see you all. Thank you so, so much for joining our webinar this afternoon, this evening, for some of you. My name is Catherine Musakali, and I'm the chair of Women on Boards Network. Every time that we run a webinar for our junior members, I am so, so happy. And the reason I'm happy is because you guys are our future. Our lives really depend on you. And that's why we are so, so happy that you could join the, the webinar this afternoon. And we learn, we always, always, always learn so, so much from you. And this afternoon, indeed, I'm looking forward to learning a lot from you, to share with you. I know in the previous sessions, we have talked about mentorship for some of you. And indeed, we are putting together a program so that we can really, really help you to be the best that you can be. Because we know that, that you have a lot of potential and all we need to do as women on boards is to reach deep into you and to find that potential and to help that potential grow. So allow me just to quickly introduce your moderator for this afternoon and then she will take us through the rest of the session. Her name is Eunice. And I want to start off by saying that Eunice is a mother. She's a mother to two lovely children, uh, Kevin and Natasha. And I hope Kevin and Natasha are on the call. <laughs> but her other life, Eunice is a dynamic leader and she has been in the financial services sector for over 23 years. She currently works for the KCB Group and she has expertise in leadership, in operations, relationship management, so on and so forth. You know, all those things that you're looking to become when you grow up, to make the money that she's making. Don't say I told you. Yeah? <laughs> so that is Eunice. She has skills in, uh, organize, uh, in, in organizational development. Um, she loves to develop relationships across different cultures. And she has a very, very good and deep record for developing and nurturing teams. So I want to hand over to you, Eunice, so that you can introduce our speaker for the day and tell us how the session is going to run. And the rest of us will just listen very, very attentively to you. Good afternoon, Eunice. Thank you very much, Catherine, for that introduction. And um, today's topic is an exciting topic, life skills that will shape your present and your future. And we have a great speaker to take us through this session. And I guarantee you're going to enjoy it. So let me introduce Job and just let me talk a bit about Job. Job's experience spans from retail, telecoms and banking sector in the region. He is an alumna of the London Business School Advanced Management Program. He holds a BSc in International Business from the United States International University, USIU, and a postgraduate diploma in business from the University of Liverpool. He also holds various global certification in telecommunication, strategy, marketing, sales, and customer experience. He currently serves as the, di as the director of customer experience of KCB bank group. So he's my boss. So I'm very careful today. And his job is a, a job is in the 2019 global customer experience leader awardee by the international customer experience awards and first recipient from Africa and second globally. That is a, that is great job. He's a, he's in, Master class, he's, he's master class certified on NPS. NPS is Net Promoter Score. 
and is a founder director of Institute of Customer Experience of Kenya, ICX, a member of International Call Management Institute, that is uh, ICMI, and the Customer Experience Professionals Association. Job has a passion for youth and for creating and guiding new business and leaders, businesses and leaders. During his free time, Job engages in his passion motorsport uh, so he's a rally driver i'm sure you've seen him uh, in, in rally where he participates actively in kenya nationally uh, rally championship he is a two-time kenya national rally champion navigator champion so i'm sure job you tell us more about that he's he also has passion for family travel and organic farming so allow me to give Job the opportunity, maybe just to guide you how it will run. Please ask a lot of questions through the chat. And also after the session, we'll have a session of about 20 to 25 minutes where you're free to ask questions. Uh, the basic rule, enjoy and, and, and ask as many questions as you can. Thank you and welcome all um, for this session. Thank you, Job, take it away. Thank you very much, Eunice, and a very Good afternoon to all my friends who have joined. I think we are going to have a nice time together. It's so nice to see so, so, so many of you logged in just to listen and to have fun together and to just learn what are these skills that I need now that will impact my future. I think Eunice has given a long, long, long introduction and I know you got nothing out of it because it was very technical. Maybe you only heard that I'm a farmer and that I'm a rally driver. Maybe those are the things that sort of define me now as Eunice introduced me. Thank you very much. And thank you very much to Women on Board Networks for having me here. In case you didn't know, I'm also a member of the Women on Boards Network. So you, might be, <laughs> so you might be wondering what is this man doing on the Women on Board Network? but it is a fantastic forum that you guys have a chance to get to learn so much in a forum like this, which we never had at all during our time. So it is really, really great that you're here, that we can be here to enjoy together and to learn stuff together. I'll try and get some quick screens here and then uh, we, can co we can continue with our learning for today. We can continue and explore things together because that's what this is all about. It's about a journey, it's an exploration journey that we are on about together. And we're here to just have fun, yeah? At the end of the day, we're here to have fun. So the first thing I'd like us to uh, ask ourselves is, I'll ask you, who are you? And just put that note somewhere, who are you? How do people define you? So young guys, I want you to just think about that. Who are you? And what do people define you as? Because that has a great, 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 great uh, stay in what we are going to discuss today. Catherine said that you are the future and that life depends on you. So if life depends on you, then you must know who you are first and foremost. So the guiding principle for today is figure out who you are. And after all the introductions were done, I thought, let me introduce myself in a different way so that you see who I am. You can see that boy in the middle there. Well, that is a boy, it looks like he's in a dress. I don't know why my mom did that to me, but that is me. Born up country, a young boy, and who am I? I love life. I love to enjoy things. I love sports. And that defines who Job Njiru is. You can see there, I love rugby. So I'm the patron of the Kenya KCB rugby team, which is the best in Kenya today. I can brag about that. And then when I was a small boy, I loved cars. I loved following safari rally cars to see where the cars are going. And I told myself when I was a little boy up country that one day 
I will do the safari rally. One day I'll become a safari rally person. And I followed my dream. Following the rally cars, talking to the rally mechanics until I got to do safari rally. And now you can see where it has taken me. That is my rally car. And you can see who I have met there. I have met His Excellency the President several times on rallying because of a passion that I had and a passion that I followed. I grew up on a farm and I love farming. So I also call myself a farmer. That's why you will see me on the other side with the chicken because I'm a farmer. And then of course I'm a business person. As Uni said, I work for KCB. I'm in charge of all the customers for the KCB group. So you can see again, the next picture is again, with the president and with my boss talking about things that I love the most. So when I was young, when I was your age, I was a noise maker. I'm one of those people you would find with a star. Noise making in class, job njiru. But then later, I decided to use my noise for the rightful purposes. And I joined customer service where I use my voice, where I talk to people, I engage customers, I channeled it to the right direction. And with that, it has led me to so many other things and meeting so many other people. The lady you see there smiling is the late Winnie Mandela, who was a very good friend of, uh, of mine. And I got to meet her through again, the work that I do. So guys, what am I saying? I said you have to find out who you are, what you like, and what makes you happy? Because a lot of that, if you discover it today, could be what leads you to your future and can be what defines your future. So one of the skills, as I have mentioned there, is self-knowledge. Know yourself. So the first point I want you to note today is that you need to know yourself. And it is for you to define who you are. Don't let people shape or define who you are. Because a lot of people have so many ideas about who you are. They'll say you are this kind of person, you are that kind of person, but probably that is not you. So you need to figure out yourself, who am I? What are my values? What are my strengths? And what are my weaknesses? Because those are the ones that will determine and you will need that in future. Then you need to self-manage yourself. Once you know who you are, then you need to manage yourself. You need to have a motivation for personal goals. What are the things that you like doing? What are the things that you enjoy doing? So once you write down who you are, write what do you love to do? Then take initiative. Start doing things yourself. Start volunteering to do things. Learn new things. Don't be shy about trying new things. And you know, you will try things and you will fail, but that should never, never discourage you. Because if you get discouraged, then the world in the years ahead is tougher. But it needs people who try things, you fail, you get up, you try another one, and you keep on moving. And that's how you become successful. I have tried so many things and I failed. When I was your age, I would try different stuff. I tried to play the drums. And I'm the kind of person I would sit on the drums and my hands, I start playing at the drums and the foot, you start doing this. But then now my foot, I would forget. So I keep doing this with my hands, but the foot forgets to move. So I gave up on playing drums because I said, this is not for me. I'm not good at drums. But I tried something else. I said, can I try a guitar? I picked a bass guitar and I tried playing the bass guitar 
And today I can play the bass guitar. So yes, I gave up on one thing, but that did not stop me from trying and learning something new. So part of it is self-management. Try new things, pursue your interests, pursue things that you love. I loved following the safari rally cars when I was small. I followed that completely. I pursued it. And when I became an adult, that's how I ended up in the rally. I went to the garages. I would spend my Saturday telling my dad, take me to the garage. Let me see how the cars are made. Let me see what happens there. I went to somebody who drives a rally car. I said, can I sit inside? Can I feel nice sitting inside? I pursued it. I never gave up. And then God rewarded me because I'm able to do that as a hobby, as a part-time to what that I do today. So the other thing, learn to manage basic things. Things like cooking. Things like doing your clothes. Those are good things to learn now. Because in a few years' time, you'll end up being very independent. You'll be required to cook for yourself, to do your own laundry, to manage your own things. Even when there are you, you, you have somebody to pay, you'll discover that you need to learn that skill yourself. For me, I was very good at making chapatis. Oh, by the time I was seven, year old, seven years old, I was making very good chapos for the entire family. I would make good chapatis. And you would say, boys, don't go into kitchen. The boys in this group, nobody should tell you that boys don't go into kitchens. Men and go into the kitchens, and we are some of the best chefs and the best cooks. So start learning now. Start being also examples of your boys here to your sisters. That you can go to the kitchen, you can make the best meal than most of them, and they'll challenge you. And the ladies also. Learn how to cook, learn how to do your laundry, learn how to organize the money that you're given, learn how to save it, learn how to manage it, because when you learn that skill now, it is a skill that you will use and you will need in the future. And then work hard and accept criticism. People will come there, criticism. And in your day-to-day, -day, there is social media. Oh, dangerous. Everyone knows your life. Everyone will post on Instagram on Twitter, everywhere people is talking, people are talking about you. They seem to know your life. They seem to know, you know, how you do your things, how you go about your business, how you live, how your house looks. Everyone will talk about it on social media, but that should not define you. And it will not stop. Because even when you're an adult like us today, people still talk about us in social media. So if we get discouraged, so we listen to criticism, it will not stop even when you're an adult, it will still be there. But at least learn how to manage it now at this age. And those are skills that you can get now, how to be self-reliant. Okay, I know that looks like somebody's bedroom in this group. Am I speaking to anybody in the group? Oh, this group has very good people. Your bedrooms look better than these. Huh? But organization is very important. You must learn how to be organized. And organization starts on small things. Small things like how your room looks. How your house looks. How does your desk in school look like? Start learning how to be organized because organization helps in how you manage time management, how you manage your time. If you're organized, then you're able to have a clear mind. You're able to make decisions easily. You're able to concentrate and you're able to monitor yourself because of how well you are organized. And they say, if you don't organize yourself, it leads to pu poor time management. And when you go to college and you go to the workplace, 
you'll discover that time management is very, very important. In the office today where we work, we have what is called a clean desk policy, that your desk must always be clean. No clutter on your desk. Things must be organized. Everything must be in its place and no unnecessary papers on your desk. Now, imagine if my parents never taught me about organization when I was young, how to take care of my space, how to take care of my room, how to take care of my desk. Today, my boss probably would have fired me for not having a clean desk or a bad desk. I could probably lose a very important document that was on the desk and it goes missing and I lose my job because of that. So being organized now will help you in the future. It will help you in the days to come because you'll have now more time to do things. So young guys, I encourage you, get a planner where you write the things that you need to do, put it on a planner. Come up with a timetable, a calendar. What time am I supposed to wake up? What am I supposed to do at this time of the day? And what am I supposed to do at this time of the day? In my calendar for the office, I have even put time when I do nothing. That between this time and this time, I am doing nothing. It is time for me to just relax, time for me to reflect, and time to, for me to organize myself and do other things other than the office work. And I have put it in my calendar so that I know that at that time, I need to stop, pause, relax, and do this other thing that I'm supposed to do. So the same for you, start forming that habit of planning ahead and putting things in a calendar, in a timeline, where you know this is my time to study, this is my time to go out and talk to my friends, this is my time to go and help at home, and this is my time to sleep or to meditate. Make sure that you have that in a planner. And when you learn how to do it now, it will be very easy for you when you start going into college and into the working environment. Then learning, keep learning. Always learn, always be curious about learning. I like you guys. I love your age because every time you're curious about things, you always want to find out how do we do this? What's the new thing? And some of it, you know what is the latest music? You know what is the latest fashion? Who did what? Who learned what? Please, let's learn all other things. Be curious about things, but things that are positive to you, things that will help you in the future. Because at the workplace, the boss, like me, I look out for people who are curious about things, people who want to understand and learn things, people that I can train and that I know because they are curious and I, that they are out to look for information and to learn things, those are the people that we take for training, that we motivate, and that we help grow in the organization. And eventually, they become the leaders in the organization. So make sure you have your goals for your academics that you study, you do your academics, and then also be curious about learning other things about the world around you. Like now, so much is happening with COVID-19 and what's happening. Everybody is panicking. Everyone is talking COVID and panicking. But it is a time to find out, what can I do during this time of COVID? What can I come out of with during this time? And some of the people who are curious about learning, curious about new ideas, like now, have become millionaires. Many companies are crying but others have made a lot of money. Imagine if you are the one who discovered sanitizer and started selling sanitizer now. You would have made so much money. Am I right? You'd be having so much money. 
some people are saying, oh, everything is bad, everything is bad, but there's someone who sold sanitizer and is selling sanitizer and has made quite a lot of money. Then look at Zoom. Today we are on Zoom. Nobody knew what Zoom was at the beginning of the year. Very few people knew about Zoom. Today, Zoom is one of the richest companies globally because somebody was curious about learning. Someone was curious what people are doing, what people want, and created this platform that we are using today. And you can see how we are all shining, all using Zoom. So even at your age, even at this time, learn and you will benefit and reap value from what you are learning, from your curiosity. When I got my first job, I got it because of learning. I looked at what people were doing around me and I wrote a paper to my boss and said, I think we can do things differently. And this is my proposal based on what I have observed and based on my research. And that is how I got my first job. And at 20 years of age, I already had an office. In as much as I was still in school, I already had a job secured for the future. And it is because of my curiosity, my learning, and my organization. Then, digital skills, you must have digital skills. I know you guys have digital skills. That is no doubt about it. If there is one skill I think everybody here has, is digital skills. Everybody here has digital skills. You know how to navigate those systems. You know how to go into the systems and check on this, check on the other. Continue. It is good to be digitally savvy, but in the right direction. Use it for the right purposes. Because when you start going into employment, the boss will want to see somebody who is computer savvy. You can search and get good information. And by the way, don't, uh, when you start working, uh, when you're asked about your digital skills, eh, TikTok is not really, you know, a digital skill, yeah? TikTok is not a skill. And you can see somebody practicing a skill there on the screen already, yeah? So learn other things that are useful to the organization, yeah? And learn how to navigate and continue being curious in accessing information, how to look for information in the digital platforms, how to assess and read that information, how to analyze it, and how to share it. That is, what, that is what businesses will be looking for in the future. And you're very lucky because today you have access to a lot of digital uh, platforms. The other thing is healthy living. Guys, you need to be healthy for you to enjoy the future that Catherine talked about. If you're not healthy, then you'll not enjoy this future. You need to learn to exercise. You need to eat healthy, and that starts now. You need to reduce stress. I know life is so stressful right now. There's a lot going on, a lot of negative news, a lot of things going on. Let's try and get our minds away from the negative news and turn it to positive things. Learn something positive uh, to do. Like for me, what I've seen my daughters doing is that they're turning their energies into other things. They're coming up with ideas. They are sharing recipes. They are learning new, new things around the, around the home. And even us, the boys, you can learn new stuff. You can learn how to change the tire of the car, how to clean it. Just get your mind off negative things and do something that is of positivity. Drink a lot of water. Sleep. Please, guys, learn how to sleep now. Your bodies need sleep. Your bodies need that energy for you to live up to the future, for you to enjoy the future. Because ahead, there's a lot of stress ahead. When it comes to college, when it comes to working, you'll be looking for that opportunity to have one minute of sleep sometimes because of how work is. But if you develop good patterns now of sleeping, 
of eating, then you'll not be stressed when you get to the years that are ahead. And then the media. I know I've talked about digital, but please organize yourself and also determine when to be on media and when you used to be, when, you, when you're supposed to be on all media. Media is addictive. And media can also be dangerous because anything you put on media has a footprint for the future. Some bosses today, when they hire people, they look at your Instagram page, they look at your Facebook page, and they see the kind of activity or things you put in there. And a lot of that sometimes can determine whether they take you or they don't take you. So again, let's make sure that we use the media, but we use it in the appropriate, appropriate way. Then communication, as I said, this is one thing that you all know and must have. And I think all of us either have seen a sister like that one there, or a friend like that one, who just folds their hands and they have communicated. That is their way of communicate, communication. Communication skills go a long way, not just now, but also for your future. How you move your body, how you pose, how you gesture when you're talking. Or com that is a form of communicating. When you're talking to somebody, your eye contact, when you look at me, then I know you're speaking to me. I can see you. I can feel you when you establish the right eye contact. And not that eye contact of you staring at somebody in the There's the eye contact where you're looking to say that, yes, you're communicating with me. Also, touch is a way of communication. There are some people when they talk, their hands are all over, you know, like this, all on you, touching, touching you. I think you know some friends like those ones who when they talk, they are all over. Again, learn how to control your hands, how to pose, and how to talk. And then now, another form of communication that has come is called space. That you can see you have to stand a certain distance from the other person when you're talking so that you don't throw saliva at them and so that you communicate accurately. You need to start learning these communication skills now and start sharpening these communication skills now because you're going to need them even in the future. You're learning them now, you're using them now, but they continue to be effective even after this phase that you are in. And also your voice, how to articulate, how to raise your voice, how to lower it, depending on who you're talking to, not to shout at somebody, but again, to just, you know, articulate yourself, make sure that every word is heard. So if you don't know how to communicate, no matter how good intentions you have or how nice things you have, if you cannot share them out to somebody there, then it is a waste of time. Then, of course, relationship skills is another skill that you will need. You will need to build friendships. You will need to keep friendships. You'll also need to let go of some friendships. It's part of relationship skills. Know when to have some friends. Know when to release some friends who are not adding value to you or do not share the same value with you. You will learn how to, how to do that and how to converse with them. It's also a time when now the boyfriend, girlfriend story starts kicking in. You need to have the skills on how do we, again, relate in a good, proper manner as a boy, as a girl, or with your, with your friends. And then stand up for what is right. Always do what is right, not what is easy. It's very easy. People want you to do what is easy. People want you to take shortcuts or we want to run away and do what we think is very easy to do. But please learn how to use your conscience and to do what is right, not what is easy. And when you do what is right, you'll find that sometimes you're all alone doing what is right. There are people who probably, you know, don't stand by you or don't support you. So chances are you might find you're all alone. Yeah, but if you're all alone and doing what is right, then continue doing the right thing. 
continue to build on your behavior right now and your integrity right now. Because when you build on it now, the values that your parents are putting in you, the values that the teachers are putting in you now will determine who you are in the future. Because in the future, there are people who will be out there who want to influence what it is that you're doing. There are people who want to give direction into your life. But if you're solidly built now, or if you establish your values now, you take responsibility of yourself now, then it will help you in the future. Nobody will be able to shake you or to move you. And then have time for yourself. Sit back, reflect on yourself, and have time to pray, have time to talk to God, and have time to just develop yourself. Me time is very, very important. Because when we started, we said you need to know who you are. And once you know who you are, then all these moral and spiritual skills are what will tide you over because you have certain values. So build those values now and hold those values dear to yourself now because they will help you in the future. And that is it for now. And I'll stop so that I can see any questions that you probably have put up there. It will be a nice time to listen to you also to hear your questions, you can put them on the chat, you can raise your hand, and then let's hear some of the questions that you might have. Okay, over to you, Eunice. Thank you. Thank you, Job, for that uh, great uh, and insightful uh, presentation. Uh, I can see we have a question from Ayana. How do you focus on what you have on your planner? That's a first question. Yeah, I, and then maybe to join on that, maybe just to also ask about failure. If you if you if you if you if you like something or you believe in it and you keep failing, what would you recommend somebody to do? Do you continue doing it or do you move on to something else? So we can start with those two. Okay, we'll start with uh, Ayana's, Ayana's question. Can you just go over Ayana's question again? Okay, Ayana's question is, how do you focus on what you have on your planner? Okay, how do you focus on what you have? So you have, have a planner, but I guess you need to focus on it. How do you focus? That's a very good question, Ayana. I, the first thing you do is that you decide, is your planner for the day or for a week? You decide now, this is my planner. And then on your planner, you put in the time that you want to do certain things. At what time am I going to do one, two, three things? Then now at that particular time, you should, again, it's good to have a watch. Yeah. And I think all of us have phones and our phones have a timer on it where you tell yourself that between 12 and 1, this is the activity that I will participate in. Then you move away from all other distractions and focus on doing that thing that you have set yourself to do. It is usually sometimes hard when you're starting off, but once you start building the rhythm onto it, then it becomes very, very easy. Then people also will start respecting your time they will know that in Ayana's planner, between this time and this time, she's not available. This is what she's doing. What happens is that if you have a planner and some time to it, other external people also start respecting your time and they start respecting what you're doing at that time. So always just plan to stick to whatever it is you've said you'll do at any given time. And the second question, if you try something and you fail, and you try something again and you fail, well, you know, you can almost keep trying <laughs> your entire life, but maybe it's not the right thing that you're trying. So it is good to have options. It is good to know that I, this is what I'm supposed to do, and uh, this is what I like. But if it doesn't work for you, then what is the alternative? You can always learn something new. 
But don't just try once or try two times. And then when it doesn't work, you say it has failed and you move on. Try always to come back and ask yourself, why is it not working? Try and ask somebody, maybe a peer or somebody called a mentor, someone who can guide you. You try and figure out, why is it failing? Why did it fail the first time? Then try and correct it. If you try after those corrections, it fails the second time. Try and again figure out, why did it fail? Get some guidance on why did it fail the second time. Then it will reach a point where it will either succeed or totally, if you've tried all the various pillars and options, it doesn't work. It is okay to dump some of these things if it does not work. But don't dump it before you've given it a try and before you've asked somebody to help you figure out maybe what is not working. So those are the options that you have. Okay, thank you. Then another question from Marion. Is it normal to be so conflicted about your future? I have wanted to be a lawyer for a long time, but I recently I have developed an interest and passion for arts. I don't want to tell my parents because it might taint their view of me as a firstborn daughter. What should I do? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> That's a very good question, Marion. I'm a firstborn. I'm a firstborn. And I so feel you. I feel where you are at. Because my father wanted me to be this maybe great lawyer and that kind of thing. My mom was a nurse. She wanted me to be a doctor. You go to school, everyone is talking, you know, the young boys ask guess we want to be pilots, all of us. So it was always conflicting, always conflicting. And every time I think I was changing what I want to be. Every time I'll be like, oh, that sounds good. I think that's what I will be. And don't feel lost. One thing that I have learned even when you come to the workspace is that what you love most, what is your passion, might end up being what you follow. And a lot of people earn money out of their passion. That it is not just what you're told or what everybody is doing that earns you probably the money or the security that you require. One basic thing you will need is an education. You need some education. You need some skills, as I said earlier. Now, you can have that education and those skills. And some of us, you go to school, you study one thing. But I can tell you, very many people in the work they are doing today is not what they studied in school. You have people who followed that path, but they discover that their passion is something, is something else. And there are those who followed things because they had been told to follow things, yeah? So what I can encourage you, Marion, is that you have an interest for the arts. And if that is your interest, it's good to discuss it with your parents. Yes, they may, they may not accept it, but it is good over time to express where your passion lies. So even if you're doing the sciences, nothing should stop you from the side exploring and studying all these things. Remember what I talked about learning? Keep learning. Keep developing that, that interest. And you have quite a number of years that are ahead of you where you can always learn, learn something new, pick something new. For me, I started off doing sales. After doing sales, selling things, I decided, no, I want to do marketing. So I changed my career and went to do marketing. And then I discovered that actually my passion is in people. All along from the time I was young, my passion was actually in people. I was doing some of these other careers because it seems to have been the wave in the university, everyone was doing international business administration. So I also wanted to be, you know, around there and everything. But my heart was in people, in serving people, and in listening to customers and doing things that are related and are around people. And I researched around that area and I started studying about customer experience. I started learning 
about customer things. I got other papers separate from what I had learned before that are in relation to, to people and to customers. And then I changed my career. So don't worry, you have time around here. It's a nice time to learn, to explore, and just continue with the, continue with the journey. But at the end, you'll be the one who will choose because you'll get to a stage of independence and of choice, and you will follow the path and the career that makes you happy and that makes you fulfilled. Because a lot of it is about fulfillment. It's not just about money. It's about what impact do you leave to the world. Thank you, Job. Well said. So Marion, talk to your parents about it, and I'm sure many of you are here who would like, who have the same question. I have two other questions. Uh, one from Wanjiko. How do you cope with pressure from your parents to excel in everything when they enroll you in so many programs and, ex and expect excellent results in everything? That's one. Another one from Tamara. How do you turn how do I turn my passion into a career? Uh, can I add you one more job? Yes, you can. What if you have a passion? That is from Ayana again. What if you have a passion, but you don't know how to start it? Okay. So two questions related to passion and then pressure from parents. Thank you very much. I think I'll start with the pressure from parents because I'm a parent and probably I give my daughters pressure and, and, I don't, and I don't know. And even for us, we were given a lot of pressure by our parents to do things, be this, be that, be whatever. I think talking from the space of a parent, the best advice I, I would give you is that you should create a channel of communication and of talking to your parents. Because as parents, sometimes we start off with all good intents. Everything, I don't think there is any parent who wants to do something that is bad to their kids or give their kids something that is bad to them. But sometimes, yes, we get carried away and we get overboard. Yeah? And the best way is to sit, I think, and have conversations with your parents. And talking to parents about some of these things is not a one-off. It's not a one-day thing. That one day I'll just sit dad over lunch when we are eating somewhere and I just tell him, dad, this is it, and then you leave it. We must have all these continuous conversations highlighting what is your dream, what are your aspirations, what are your passions, and also come up with the initiative Sometimes parents do it because maybe us as young people, we have not initiated something ourselves. So when we sit back, the parents think, oh, this one is not doing anything. This one is idle. And when you're quiet, we don't communicate. So the parents will just keep adding things to you and looking for things for you to do and that kind of thing. But if we talk, if we continually communicate, and it's never too early to start engaging our parents. Right now, even at this age, let's start engaging them and telling them, look, uh, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm aspiring to do. This is what I want to do, and it will help me on my journey ahead. And they'll give you that guidance. And it's not just your parents alone. It can also be maybe somebody elder in your, either somebody in your church or your, a relative who can act also as a mentor. That you don't just talk to your parents only, but start looking for people who have sort of made it or are leading the direction that you want to head that can act as your mentors. So it can be even your bigger sister or a bigger cousin somewhere that even your parents sort of trust, but they can guide you. So start looking also for mentors, not just your parents. Yeah. And then now have those conversations now about what you want to be about your career, about your passion, and then they can help guide you. And the other thing about turning your passion to your career, there are two ways about it. You know, your passion can be your career, or your passion can also be sort of your hobby that you do alongside another career. Like for me today, I'm passionate about motorsport, I'm passionate about cars, 
I'm passionate about farming, but those are not what I do every day. I have a job where I do what I enjoy, which is around people. But I create time for all these other things. I create time to practice in the rally. I take time to take part in competition and to live up my, my dream and my passion. I also create time to go to the farm. I create time to go and take care of the animals in the, in the farm. So turning passion into career is all about how you organize yourself. Because if you're passionate about, um, say, the computers and something digital, then start learning stuff that is around that space. Start learning stuff that deals with computers or that particular line because you're passionate naturally about it. So you're naturally pulled towards technology. Then you start learning, researching, and taking courses that are around that particular space. You're passionate about sports. Okay, look around and see which sport and which sport in Kenya. And are you just passionate and you look also, will that sport sustain you in the future? You love it, yes, but how long will you stretch it in the future? So you can practice, learn, and you name it, and do it with something else. So passion can be done with more than one thing, not just your career alone. But in terms of your career, it is good to get the skill that enhances your passion. So passion has to be backed up with a certain skill or a certain education. Other is passion on its own. It's just passion. Yeah. Thank you, Job. The questions are coming in fast and furious, so I'll allow some of them to speak. Uh, Oliver, can you ask a question? Oliver Nyori, then Sigi Karanja to follow. Oliver, was, you can speak. I was asking if it's possible to have two careers simultaneously. Okay. And I think that's the same question Tanisha has. What if you have a career choice in mind? Both you are, which you are both passionate about, how do I choose? So you can answer those two together. Okay. Then Sigi, proceed and ask your question. So my question was, how do you discover your passion if you've never been interested in anything that you're learning so far? Okay. And then there is uh, Natasha. I don't know whether she wants to speak, but she says, what, what if you try to speak out, but everyone takes you as a joke? <laughs> so you need that is you taking <laughs> Natasha as a joke, eh? <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, maybe you can answer those. We are running out of time, but we'll do maybe three more. I've got two more lined up. Okay. One, can you take two careers simultaneously? That's a very interesting, uh, interesting question. Yeah, I call it very interesting. And it's part of what I think Catherine sort of does in her other world. Yeah. She takes more than or two, even three, four careers simultaneously because she'll be doing something else here. Tomorrow she's doing something else there. It is very possible to take more than one, uh, two careers simultaneously. But first thing is that you must first at least get something that you are, how do I say, solid at. Something that you're very good at. That must be something that stands out in you first and foremost. And then you can branch into so many other areas thereafter. Because you might try to take all at a go and then you discover you're trying to juggle this one and juggle the other. At least get something started and moving. And from there, you can always branch out into very many other areas. Like for me, how it is, is that I, for instance, sit in the bank or I'm a banker. That is my main career as a customer experience professional. That's my main career. But I have a passion to speaking, for instance, for mentoring then that branches out as another part of what I do. So it's almost a second career. Then I love farming. You can almost call it a hobby, but it's not my main career, but it's something that I love doing. So I have that running on the side. 
But at the end of the day, my default settings are I'm a customer experience professional. That is what I am known, I am known for. Or you can be a lawyer, but then you do other things on the side, like a lawyer in your professional corporate side, and then maybe you're doing governance on the side with other associations. So yes, you can take what you love and it can be harnessed in more ways than one. So you can be on mainstream employment or you can be in business, but also on the side, you're doing something else that again drives you or that you're passionate about. It's all about organization. It's all about how you organize yourself. It's all about how you learn about planning, how you learn about the issue of time, and how do you create time to live up to and do all these other things that you want to do. Because remember, if you have a career somewhere in an institution, they expect you to work from say eight to five. So when you're working eight to five, they don't expect you to do anything else other than their work between eight to five. But how do you plan yourself then, maybe after five to whatever, to run something different? Or if you're in business, how do I split my time that between this time to this time of the morning, I'll be doing this part of the business, if you're self-employed, and this other time to do this other side of the business. So it's all about how do you organize yourself? And that's why I said early, start learning how to plan, to self-manage yourself, and to organize yourself. Then if you do that, then you, it will, you'll be able to do all these things that you want to do. The other thing about passion and discovery that in whatever you're doing, you've not discovered your passion, your passion yet. Sometimes passion is not what is taught, is not what you will get from the classroom. Bigger time of it is what drives you, what, what, what is inside your belly, what makes you thrilled, what do you feel that this is what I want to do, this is what I want to pursue, what is it that you dream about, that's where it is all Formed. That's where it starts off. And yes, um, someone said that, you know, when you speak out and you say something, everyone thinks that it is a joke. I always say, as long as you believe in what it is that you're doing as an individual and you're passionate about it, very many ideas are killed at the dream stage. And I always say there is what you call the ha 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 idea. The idea everybody laughs at, the one, ha, 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 everyone, kill them to an check, everyone laughs at, could be the aha idea. Always remember that, that the ha, 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 ha idea could be the aha idea. People could be laughing at it right now, but if you're doing your research, you're thinking through it, you're working through it, and you're passionate about it, it could be something that everyone, we'll see that is where the solution was. So don't give up on your ideas. Nurture it, speak about it, and try and understand those who are laughing. Why are they laughing? What is it that they are laughing? Do they, some of them, maybe they don't even have an idea close to that, or they don't even understand your concept. That's why maybe they are laughing. Yeah. So try and figure out why, but that should not put you down. Yeah. Just put, document your idea, and talk about it and people see that you're serious about your idea. Thank you. Wow, we are out of time, but allow me to just allow the two last questions that are here from Emanuela. I have experienced criticism from my parent and it lets me put it let me put everything aside. My friends, I became a loner and just focus on schoolwork. At least I could get some acknowledgement. Okay, a lot of uh, learning for parents. And then I have from Nia, I have so many passions in which I love equally, but I'm conflicted in which I could choose. I think you've answered that one. Eh? So maybe you can answer the last one and then we, 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 we sum up and we can close. Thank you. I, I think Catherine will need to organize a forum for parents. I think we need to bring the parents in the room. That's the one, <laughs> that's the one thing that you I'm got thinking. it, Job. You got yeah, it. Because I can see that a lot of the our young friends, my young friends here, have a lot of passion, 
have a lot of ideas, have a lot of dreams, but it is about how to harness them, how to put them together um, so that they are appreciated and that uh, they are acted on. One thing is don't die, don't, don't, don't give up on your dream. Keep talking about your dream, keep talking about your passion. If you can also even journal it, document it somewhere, write it, write it somewhere and start learning even at this age now how to put it almost as a business plan. Then probably your parents will think it, you're, you're serious about it because now maybe they're just seeing you talking about it and you name it, but they don't know where it's headed. But if you start maybe even document it in an organized manner and ask them that this is the support I want to drive this passion, I think they'll start realizing that you're, you're actually very serious about what it is that you're, that, you're, that you're pursuing. And also, they'll earn confidence from you slowly. And I think the big issue why sometimes they say don't have this friend or the other is just the confidence. They don't understand probably what you're getting out of the, associated, the association with some certain friends. So parents sometimes are like the DCI, the criminal investigation. They always imagine there's something that is not that is not right going on, but it's for you people to give us the confidence that yes, you're learning to be independent on your own. You have these ideas, learn to communicate the ideas and learn to share them openly. Then a lot of freedom and latitude will start coming your way. For me, it took time to get through to my parents, but when eventually they did, I was, I'm able to do and I was able to do and pursue the dreams that I have today and the things that I want to do today. Thank you, Job. So I think I'll give this opportunity to Catherine just to wrap up and as she wraps up, she can actually answer just one question on how do, do the young people get through to the parents? They find it difficult to communicate. And as Job has said, I think we'll need a session for parents but maybe you can answer that one and at least say something to end this session. Thank you, Job. Eunice, can I say something and let Job answer that question? Mm. Job, please answer that question, then I will finish off. <laughs> About parents. How do you yeah, get they, they, to they, parents? <laughs> how do they communicate to parents? It's, it's difficult. <laughs> I think parents have a lot of things going through their minds also because they are trying to juggle, you know, maybe their work, their office, they come on with their own stresses and that kind of thing. But the best thing I think is try and also schedule time with the parents, you know, try and schedule, you know, in part of your plan that look, we need to sit and to chat. It can be either by having dinner together that you share those ideas or when you have your Sunday lunch together or something like that, you share and you talk on the table together. Try and create that time. What's happening today is that sometimes you see people, I mean, everyone is on their own gadget and then you get your plate from the kitchen and you're in your own room and you're somewhere, then you come to parents to talk to them when there is either trouble coming or you need, you need something done. Try and create regular conversations with parents or with your mentor or with your guardian. Try and create that regular conversation. And that way, then they'll be able to pick what are your passion, what is it that you're doing on a regular basis. What happens is that parents just go, no, because you come to them maybe once in that one week is when you come to talk to them. So they look at you in suspicion of what have you been up to throughout the week or what do you want now? And they start looking at you that you picked something on your social media that you're coming now here to me. But if you create that regular conversation, then you'll find them becoming more approachable and you'll find them more communicative and they'll start buying into your dream some more. Please don't shock us as parents by just coming once and then you disappear for another time, then it's when you come to us. Let's have regular dialogue. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much, uh, Job. Yes, there's a request if we will share the recording and indeed we shall share the recording so that even those of your siblings, your cousins, your friends who have missed this wonderful, wonderful session can also benefit from what Job has, has, has talked to us about today. 
I think I speak for all of you if I say that this has been a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful session. I have learned so much, so, so much, even for my own personal life. And I have also stepped back and looked at myself as a parent and asked, where is it I go wrong? Do I pile on too much pressure? Um, so, so there's lots of questions. And I think uh, Job, if you don't mind, we shall come back to you so that you can do session two of this uh, particular age group. Because as you can see, there are so many questions still coming in. I have also just uh, requested uh, Kirote that you two could actually do a session for the parents. Because as you said, perhaps us as parents are piling on too much pressure on the kids. Mm -hmm. And for the family to be effective, for the family to be a happy place, there's need for proper communication and understanding by both the parents and the kids. So indeed, thank you so much for the session. Thank you for the great ideas that we have, uh, you have shared. And yes, we shall definitely be coming back to you um, so that you can do session two of this. A number of questions are still coming in. We shall collect them and then respond to them and share uh, for all the people, to all the people who, who joined this session. For those of you who have older brothers and sisters and cousins and friends, um, there is going to be another session with Job um, for, the, for, the, uh, for the ones who are uh, 20 years and above in another few minutes, uh, starting from five o'clock. So as soon as you log off, please tell them to uh, register and join the call because I'm sure we are going to have a wonderful, wonderful session with Job as well. Before I finish, I want to introduce, and thank you, Eunice. You have been an all awesome, awesome um, uh, moderator. Thank you for moderating so, so well. Thank you. Thank you, Eunice. You're Before I, I, I leave, I would like to introduce Selena, Selena Tan. Uh, Selena, are you on the call? Yeah. Great. Hi. I want to introduce Selena and let her say a few words. Selena is interning with us and uh, let me ask her to just say a few words about herself and also to share her contact with you because if you have any ideas about the junior um, uh, members of uh, women on boards and what sort of help you want, please do reach out to Selena. Over to you, Selena. Thank you. Hi, I'm Selena. I'm a rising junior studying civil engineering at Columbia University in America. And I'll be a summer intern with the Women on Boards Network in communications and digital marketing. And you may contact me via email. I'll drop my email in the chat. So please feel free to share your ideas. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much indeed. And Kirote, can I ask you to then close for us? Thank you very much, Catherine. And uh, you'll allow me just to go with the audio, just to say uh, thank you to each uh, one of you for making it and, um, and really engaging. We look forward to another session with you. Uh, I pray every blessing upon you and everyone in your household. Uh, and I pray that even as the evening goes ahead, you'll be able to reflect. And Lord, be with us as we go. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And Thank have you. a great evening. Thank you, Job. See you Thank shortly you. again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.